Weekly TV program has now extended to one of Papua New Guinea's most inland rural areas. It is the Karamui Salt Nomane Electorate of Simbu Province. Following the successful launching of the program, students including the people in that area can now connect to the outside world through television. MTV News journalist Fabian Hakalitz was in Karamui and describes the reaction of the people as an eye-opener when the television was switched on. Karamui district is one of the remotest areas in Papua New Guinea within the Karamui Salt Nomane electorate that shares borders with Simbu and Gulf provinces. Karamui is only accessible through air transport. The closest is 25 minutes on a small aircraft from Mount Hagen's Kagamuga Airport in Western Highlands province and passing through rugged mountainous terrains before arriving at Karamui Airstrip in Simbu province. The launching of the Equi TV program was an eye opener for the people because through television they will be able to see the news and current affairs happening around the world. Speeches delivered focused on the importance of television to education and the word respect that urged people to look after assets that would sustain livelihood. National Education Department's Acting Assistant Secretary of the e-learning division, Hati Miro, says the EquiTV program bridges education gaps using information communication technology. Through this program, students and teachers enhance their teaching and learning through the exchange of ideas. One click something and it touch me. Time we come, come up. All officers talk. As soon as this TV broke for primary school, he come on. All beginning looking look in Parliament's house. In real. Also looking no money. Only turn him now, he talk to all Papa Mama. Hey, this la pizza, I'm if I look in the TV now, I'm still on money. That's change. The television can be used by the community to watch educational and other programs of significance. It also benefits communities through programs channeled through pre to air television station MTV. An important partner to the PNG government is Japan. Japan, through its program JICA, has been supporting the education sector, especially with the development of electronic media broadcasting lessons through the television medium. Sigeru Sugiyama, Jaike country representative in Papua New Guinea, explained that Simbu was not part of the EquiTV program, but the commitment in identifying the needs and struggles was considered. Jaika was impressed with the rollout of the EquiTV program by the National Education Department. Uh, to make tremendous benefit by utilizing this EquiTV program. Please bear in mind and please do the good maintenance. They are the keys to the success. 
The National Education Department will provide equal opportunities for children in Papua New Guinea and invest more in teaching and learning materials. This like YouTube project of long and have come up close to long half a million to one million kina. For long Kalamoy, I mean one big plus challenge because long mountain and river and all kinds of things are stuff. Money long you miss spending long Kalamoy, I mean big plus true. The Equity TV program since rolled out in 2000 has gained momentum over time. A worthy investment the National Education Department will foster with its development partners like JICA. To ensure that you, by giving accessibility to every child in this country to go into school system, we must support in ensuring that quality education outcome must be, reason, must be achieved. The launching of the Equity TV program will go down in Karamwi's history page, a milestone achievement that will never be forgotten by the people. And we live in front of the parents of teachers playing me long here, especially Karamui schools. Strong look, fully come into the place Please have me to thank you. Because me stop and me stop to dark street. So now you bring me black come also. Me black by comparing one time all, all country blow you me. Now in the world too. It's not sunny, that's all I'm bringing me black come up. Tati me a time will come now when I'm playing, please. All money, no one, all things by staff yet, no, look, look, get, no, just something good. Anyway, so I think we will have almost to go through here, please. We will think we will start with Kundiawa or Goroka or Mosfield or outside to kind of say, world to we will go outside finish. Thank you, true, thank you, true, Lloyd. And that's all for this episode. A reminder that if you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please contact us via the email address showing on your screen or visit our Facebook page. From the Awesome one team, it's goodbye for now. Welcome to Awesome 1M. World AIDS Day is a day about educating everyone about the facts of HIV and AIDS and how we can make life better for people living with HIV AIDS. Going for a HIV test for one is not just about knowing your status, but by doing so, we give authorities a more accurate data that allows them to see who is and who isn't affected. This gives them better information to go about planning how we can stop the spread of HIV AIDS in our country. Also, one reporter, Judah Memafu with more. World AIDS Day is an annual event that is aimed at driving awareness towards the prevention of the spread of HIV and the plight of those that suffer from the virus. While progress has been made over the years, there are still many people who do not fully understand HIV AIDS. Thousands of people still out there need to be tested and need treatment. And there are many more who are still suffering from HIV and AIDS that needs treatment so that they can sustain their life, live full lives in our country. The 1st of December marks World AIDS Day and the national theme for this year is Know Your Status, Get Treated, Live Longer. Now the question is, do you know your status or are you too afraid to find out? In recent times, what the government, 
NGOs and other stakeholders are pushing more towards is the prevention strategy. This means that with more people going for voluntary counseling and testing, or VCT, those that need treatment can be easily identified and helped, which now minimizes the risk of spread. Plenty line also a film same clinic or come lock clinic. Okay. Lock is in marathon. But time if like got this for volunteers to go out the community, only working more awareness. Not this plus me plan work lock is in plenty all uh clients from Ibla or STI cases, plenty work like come lock clinic, now me plan looking more, now me plan work lot treaty more. I like talks away or some time you got STI. Kind of some syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, trichomonas, or susu emi planti, or belly pain, na behind long lower uh, belly button. All right. You know can feel him same lo one plus something because this is something by giving problem lo you. So you must come like see marathon. So me plan no charge him you, you give free marathon lo you. I think that when we look back over the last decade and what the uh, predictions were, it, it was quite almost catastrophic. But there has been a lot of work that's been done by churches, by government, by the community. And when we look back, it's actually been quite a, a, a wonderful response, really, because many of those predictions haven't come true. And while HIV has touched people in a terrible way, particularly those who have contracted uh, the virus in their family, it hasn't been as big in terms of numbers of people as was predicted. Since the first reported case in 1987, there has been a rapid increase in cases of new infection every year. Although a cure is yet to be found, there have been improvements in medicinal treatment that reduces the spread of HIV. Women for mothers who are pregnant, uh, and if you have HIV, you know, your babies most likely will born negative. So that's the good news and it's already happening. And the medicines we have now, I bet like they can do that. If we don't do these things, if we don't change the impediments to getting people tested, treat, treated, well, then the three zeros are just words. Uh, it will never happen. We know it can be done. Cuba has just declared themselves the first country in the world to have become free of mother-to-child transmission. There are no children born, even to women living with HIV, who have uh, become HIV infected through through the pregnancy and birth process. It can be done. We know it can be done, but it can only be done by changing some of our thinking and changing some of the policies and stripping away the, the, the impediments that keep the people most at risk, most vulnerable, out of our clinics, out of testing, off treatment. But more needs to be done if we are to really curb the spread and bring the rate of infection and the spread of virus down to zero. For many people living with HIV AIDS has always been seen as a health issue, but according to UNAIDS country director Stuart Watson, HIV AIDS is more than just a health issue, it is also a social issue. It affects our way of life, the way we think and how we view people, and more importantly, how we treat each other. In this segment, Judah Mamafu gives us an insight into the new approach of HIV AIDS strategies. The easiest way to handle something we don't understand 
is to fight it or to ignore it. Many of us easily ignore the plight of people living with HIV and others who are affected by it. We judge too quickly before finding out why. Maybe because we're scared of facing up to our true feelings and our true nature. Never underestimate what a woman will do to make sure that her children are fed, that they have medicine if they need it, that they are in school. And in a country uh, like Papua New Guinea where in an urban setting a woman may not be able to grow a garden and look after her family that way, she may be forced to do some things which are against the principles of, of church teachings, but out of desperation and out of love for her children and care and protection of her children now. The new approach in prevention strategies takes a turn in just viewing HIV as a health disease and preventing its spread to also educating people on the effect it has on those around them and the attitudes and behaviors that are born from it. Our new strategy is about working smarter and in a more focused way and making sure that the very limited money that we have goes furthest. Now Papua New Guinea needs to make some changes. Um, the country spends almost 80% of all of its HIV related resources on running the machinery of the response and only 20% on actually responding to HIV. We need to flip that on its head. We need to be spending about 20, 10, 20% on running the machinery of the response and 80% on the response itself. And even with the decreasing resources from the donor community and government, we still have enough money if we just stop spending most of it on running a machinery that isn't producing results and um, need some reform. We've been calling for it. We need to go to do more. And I think, you know, like, I can admit that I think it's funding problem as well. I think for us at the national level, I think we see that is our major role. That's why it's council, you know, the awareness part of it, and, and prevention. And that, I think, in the last few years, we've not, we've not been doing that. I think it's the main, main pro uh, reason. problem is, I think, the budget. But uh, like I was saying before, like, uh, but uh, the most at risk population, uh, like. The, even the Australian government support, uh, they, they also targeted, targeting that one, so they, we are targeting that part. The UN AIDS have been in the country since 2003 and have been working closely alongside government agencies like the National AIDS Council Secretariat, church groups, and other local and international NGOs to combat the spread of HIV and more importantly help change the mindsets of the general public on how we view HIV AIDS and the people affected by it. I think the main message is that despite all these challenges that I've talked about, we've done an amazing job. The government has done a fantastic job in responding to HIV in some of the world's most challenging uh, environments. Papua New Guinea uh, has almost 80% of people who need to be on treatment on treatment. That's the third highest treatment initiation rate in the Asia Pacific region in probably the region's most geographically, culturally, infrastructure challenged um, environment. It can be done. It's happening. There's so much more that needs to happen, but you know, the, the those challenges which we've been talking about, we can overcome them and we've seen Papua New Guinea standing up and, and doing it. We just need to make sure we don't relax the pressure, um, keep that pressure up and, and, mm -hmm. and just make sure that we do what we know can be done. We do know what it takes to bring about the end of AIDS. We can do it. Papua New Guinea can do it with some hard decisions, with some good leadership, with some good focus, it can happen.
publicly run educational institutions have been contributing to Papua New Guinea's economic development. However, they have not been fully recognized by the national government. They are just among those church-run schools not given a recognition or fair treatment in terms of the national budgetary allocation, although contributing to quality education. But when will their name appear in the budget books remains with the national government. Fabian Hakalis looks at one of these privately run institutions, Goroka Grammar School in Eastern Highlands Province. Goroka Grammar School is one of the private permitted education institutions operating in the Eastern Highlands Province, Papua New Guinea. The need for a private school with secondary level of education to offer grades 9 to 12 signaled for its formation that became a reality in 2001. Goroka Grammar School enrolls students beginning with early child learners all the way to grade 12. Not only from Goroka but also provides boarding services, opening doors to students from outside Eastern Highlands Province like New Island, whose parents want quality education. With the goal to provide quality education, it's the only private permitted school that has adopted the Papua New Guinea education policies in terms of the standard-based curriculum. This is because it's a PNG school and for students to know their roots, culture and tradition integrated into their policies. According to Principal Nelson Juanaromo, the curriculum is further enhanced by other resource materials sourced from outside. To meet uh, the goals and policies of the Department of Education and that is one task of of, of schools, whether it's a pri private run school or whether it's a public run school. Uh, Department of Education sets policies uh, for schools to implement and, and, and we also have to ensure that those policies are implemented. And as a private school, uh, we see that that has to be uh, implemented and that the students, when they leave school, uh, they are also uh, meet the requirements as set by the Department of Education. While privately permitted schools like Koroka Grammar School struggles to provide quality education and contribute significantly to economic development and nation building, funding by the national government in the annual budgets to such education institutions still remains a problem. Just like any church run agency schools, they do not receive full government support. But this does not stop them to deliver quality education because of passion and determination. Goroka Grammar School has been operating using mainly of what is paid in tuition fees by students who enroll. At least for the government to assist with uh, uh, salaries for the teachers. Um, I think that that will, uh, because in a private run institution, the salaries of teachers makes up uh, the, the major uh, component of our expense. Uh, and if the government uh, is able to assist us uh, in that area, uh, we should be able to look at uh, other uh, sources where we can expand. According to Mr. Juan Romo, the school ensures it sustains its operations. First and foremost, the school invests in its teachers to ensure they deliver quality teaching and work as professionals. Ensure that students, our teachers are also uh, made accessible to, to technology and that by that we have provided laptops to all teachers. And I'm proud to say that all teachers of Koka Grammar School have uh, laptops which it is uh, accessible to uh, internet technology. To enhance students' learning, the school also invests in information communication technology, ICT. 
This is to ensure students further enhance their knowledge and skills by being up to date with the latest information. Learning is also enhanced with music and arts, all this that makes the students being competent as school leavers. to ensure that students are able to access uh, information technology through uh, internet. And we have uh, sufficient uh, computers in our computer lab. We also have computers in our uh, library that should enhance uh, student learning whenever they wish to. While Guruka Grammar School is privately operated, students are also provided with international resource materials to give them a broader perspective of the outside world. Our students also sit for the University of New South Wales uh, assessment test called the ICAS test. Uh, we also have students sitting for the general assessment test from the uh, offered by the University of New South Wales. This is just another story of private or church-run institutions who with very little government support still continue to strive providing the much needed services to the people of this nation. Now the question is, when will the national government try to recognize such institutions who have contributed to nation building in terms of their budgetary allocation? And that government should actually look at uh, these privately run institutions as well as the church run institutions. Uh, if you look at the level of services that these institutions provide, uh, they, uh, the level of services are, are very, very uh, high, so the government should be look at it and ensuring that it should be in the budget. Uh, probably, if not for next year, then it should uh, be looked at in the following year. <laughs>